So for most things fitness related, shortcuts generally aren't worth taking. If you wanna lose fat, a slower cut is better at preserving muscle than a crash diet. If you wanna build a proportional physique, it's probably gonna take years of consistent lifting. However, when it comes to the bench press, there are four things you can start doing right away that are gonna have an immediate impact on your max strength. Now, I already discussed the importance of a proper lifting arch in my Bench Press Technique Tuesday video, so I'm gonna skip that here. Still, if you're not setting up at least some kind of arch when pressing, you're leaving a ton of gains on the table, and I'd recommend starting there before moving on to the other four steps. Now, if you'd rather use a more moderate arch, that's fine, especially if you have muscle building goals, and you'll still benefit from these four steps. Okay, so the first step is to fix your bar path, or the path the bar takes when viewed from the side. Now, on the other two power lifts, the squat and the deadlift, it's good lifting advice to keep the bar path as vertical as possible. Now, ideally, the bar should move up and down in a perfectly straight line centered over the middle of the foot. And I think this has led many lifters to assume that you should also use a vertical bar path on the bench press, which isn't true. Now to maximize strength on the bench press, you should be pressing the bar back toward your face and then up, not just straight up. And in order to understand this, we need to cover some basic biomechanics first. Now with the bench press, the pecs and front delts are contracting to perform horizontal shoulder adduction, basically where you bring your arm across your body like in a fly. Now, but that's not the only movement pattern here, unless you're doing a guillotine press where you lower the bar straight down to your neck, there will also be some degree of shoulder flexion occurring where you raise your arm up like in a front raise. And you can see here from the side angle that your arm is raising up in the bench press, similar to how it would in a front raise, except with less range of motion. Now, if we rotate this video of the front raise so my torso is in the same plane as the bench, you should be able to see that the basic movement pattern is exactly the same. Okay, next we need to cover some really basic physics. So when you unrack the bar, it should naturally come into position over the shoulder joint. This is because the front delt doesn't need to do any work performing shoulder flexion as there's no horizontal distance or moment arm between the bar and the shoulder joint. So this is where you should start. Now let's look at two different lowering scenarios. On the left, we're lowering the bar straight down like in a guillotine press. And on the right, we're lowering the bar down and slightly forward like you would in a traditional bench press. We'll obviously be stronger benching with the technique on the right because it reduces the total range of motion the bar has to travel. However, it does pose a problem during the concentric phase of the movement. Because we've brought the bar so far forward, we've now created a moment arm between the bar and the shoulder. This means that the front delt has to work much harder to bring that bar back into balance over the shoulder again. You can think about it this way. By bringing the bar forward, you're basically forcing yourself to do a bit of a front raise. So when getting the bar off your chest, you should shove the bar back first to reduce that moment arm between the bar and the shoulder as quickly as possible. This way, once you hit the sticking point a few inches off your chest, your front delts don't need to work nearly as hard to overcome that shoulder flexion demand. And this back and up technique is also gonna strengthen the pecs more since it emphasizes horizontal shoulder adduction over shoulder flexion at the toughest points in the press. Now let's contrast this with lowering the bar down and forward, but then pressing the bar straight up. When you press the bar straight up off your chest, you keep that moment arm in place, meaning your front delt has to work extra hard to move the weight up and you'll be much weaker if you bench press this way. Data from Dr. Thomas McLaughlin found that not only do the biomechanics make sense, it also plays out in the real world. He found that while most benchers did correctly bring the bar down and slightly forward in a smooth arc on the descent, only elite level benchers drove the bar back and then up, whereas novice lifters tended to press the bar straight up first and then slightly back. Now putting this into practice, I'd recommend filming your sets from the side to get a close look at your bar path, and you can use an app like Iron Path or Dartfish to track this easily. If you're pressing the bar straight up, make a conscious effort to press the bar back first and then up. Now, of course, this might feel a little bit awkward at first. You wanna to get to a point where it feels natural for you. Now, for me, I like to cue this by thinking about pushing the floor away from me while I simultaneously drive the bar back and up off my chest. Okay, the second step is to take a wider grip on the bar. Wherever you're currently gripping the bar, you should try gradually easing your grip out by about one finger's width every workout over the course of the next few weeks. Most of the world's top bench pressers press with a max legal grip width with the index fingers all the way out to the grip rings, although this may not be comfortable for everyone. You'll typically be stronger with a wider grip up to a point for a few reasons. First, a wider grip is gonna mean a slightly shorter range of motion. Secondly, a 
wider grip is gonna make the midpoint and lockout portions of the lift easier since the pecs won't be quite as contracted. Basically, a wider grip means there's gonna be more stretch on the pecs to contract more forcefully throughout the range of motion. And thirdly, it's generally easier to maintain a tight upper back with a wider grip as it tends to force you into a bit more scapular retraction and depression giving you a more stable base of support throughout the lift. All right, so now that you've fine-tuned your technique, the next step is to simply bench press more frequently. And whenever people tell me they wanna get their bench press up, the first question I ask them is how often they're currently bench pressing per week. They'll usually say once or twice a week, and I'll then say you need to bench more often. Now, if you wanna get better at any skill, let's say shooting free throws, you probably think that shooting more often is gonna help you get better at shooting free throws. Now, practice doesn't always make perfect if you're just practicing bad habits over and over. So practicing more might not actually help much unless you're actively addressing those underlying issues while practicing. And that's why we covered technique first. But once you're practicing smart, focusing on improving your technique, that's when practice really does make perfect. And although I've personally run very high frequency bench programs where I bench four or five times a week, now you do have to be more careful with overtraining by keeping volume and intensity quite low on the individual training days. Now, so I think benching three days a week is gonna be the sweet spot for most people. And you can easily set that up with a daily undulating periodized design where you focus on slightly different adaptations each day. This type of setup was shown to increase one rep max strength in a DUP study from Dr. Mike Zordos. For example, running with a setup like this, we would focus on hypertrophy on day one with sets of eight reps, power on day two with lighter speed work, and then strength work on day three with heavy sets of five. Now you could also optionally add in a heavy top set before the hypertrophy work on day one, which is gonna be my fourth step here. I think top sets are a great way to get comfortable with lifting heavy weight on a regular basis, which is gonna improve confidence in your ability to lift heavier without frying your recovery. I'd recommend adding one heavy top set somewhere around 90% of your one rep max for two to three reps before backing off and doing your main work for that day. And you only need to do this once a week, ideally before your lightest lifting day. And while I definitely wouldn't recommend maxing out on these top sets regularly because strength is specific, if you wanna get stronger, you gotta get used to having some heavy weight in your hands on a pretty regular basis. Okay, so guys, if you're looking to put all of this information together, I recommend checking out my bench press specialization program, which I'm gonna knock down to 50% off for the release of this video. So for the next week, if you're looking for a complete training program to take your bench press strength to the next level, you can go to jeffnippard.com and take advantage of the discounted rate for the next week. Now this program uses an upper lower training split with the bench press being prioritized three days per week with a DUP setup and the feedback on it over the last year or so has been amazing. Uh, so I'll have that as the first link in the description box down below. And also a lot of the info in this video came from the How to Bench Press Definitive Guide over on strongerbyscience.com, which I'd strongly recommend giving a read if you haven't already. So I'll have that link down below as well. Um, so that's it for this one, guys. Don't forget to leave me a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. Subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you guys all here in the next one.